friends hi hope you all are doing good in this particular module we are going to discuss a judgment of the high court of uh, south africa in relation to the gar provisions as you may have noted the gar provisions of south africa are largely similar to the gar provisions which are there in india india has borrowed substantial part of the gar provisions also from the south african tax law uh, briefly the fact of this particular case is there's an a limited uh which has acquired the preference shares of psic3 and this psic3 has in turn made an investments in psic4 this psic4 has further made investments in di trust which is an o- offshore trust this offshore trust has made two sort of transactions one it has uh, it it has acquired it has acquired uh, or made investments in mssa uh this mssa has further used this particular fund to repay its loan to a macquarie group entity because it was a part of the macquarie group entity uh this particular proceeds were subject to receiving interest uh as and when the interest which could have been due ideally uh, this particular proceeds should have been transferred to the di trust and this di trust should have transferred this to uh to psic4 and further to the psic3 uh, however uh, rather than passing this particular economic benefit in terms of interest uh, what di trust did is to invest this particular fund uh, in a brazilian company's bond or bonds from brazil which were as such exempt from the treaty perspective between south africa as well as brazil had it been uh, because of di trust being a trust as per the south african tax law if uh, di trust is receiving interest from mssa that particular interest would have been taxable uh, in the hands of psic4 because of pass through basis but because it is making this particular investments in the bonds of brazil company which is uh, exempt as per the uh, as per the south african brazil tax law what the revenue alleged in this case was that uh, there is an overall scheme which is being framed by the di trust as well as the other participants by which they could actually avoid taxes uh, uh this is something which is peculiar from the uh, domestic tax law or as well as the treaty position which south africa has with other jurisdictions uh however just from an indian tax perspective if we want to analyze and see uh the relevant points over here is that if you will check on this particular aspect what is an impermissible avoidance arrangement in this particular case is the transactions which di trust has done the transaction which a limited has done by investing in psic3 is not a tax avoidance arrangement transaction a limited in its submission has stated that a limited was never under the impression that they are going to make an investments in di3 trust in all the documents which it submitted as well as which were before the a limited it was mentioned to it that a limited is going to invest in psic3 which will further give a loan or make an investments in mssa so that mssa can clean its book and repay its loan to the macquarie group entity the involvement of the brazilian as well as dii trust as well as psic4 was something which a limited was not aware the revenue authorities said that because a limited is part of this particular transaction or it's involved in this particular transaction therefore uh, uh, if they disregard this particular transaction a limited should be also considered as a party to this transaction and gar uh, provision should e- apply equally valently and should be considered as if a limited has directly given loan to the mssa uh, uh generally if they did not disregard this particular transaction uh, the income de- which was distributed by uh, psic4 to psic3 and psic3 to a limited would have been exempt because dividend is not taxable as per the south african tax law based is the understanding from this particular judgment uh if i before jumping into the other relevant points of the Uh, uh of the held caption i would just want to make us certain minute interference of the south african law with our indian law if you will see this particular extract of the uh, im- of the uh, iaa point you would find that these provisions are similar to the provisions which we have in the indian tax law 
also uh, if you see what they have defined as party they have said that it includes any person who participates or takes part in an arrangement it is the similar definition which we have in a indian tax law in section 102 wherein they have said defined a party as anyone who party as an as entity who participates or takes part in an arrangement uh unfortunately our uh, our faq 17 of 2017 of january 2017 does not uh, uh, specifically deal into this particular aspect as in what will they do if a particular transaction is regarded as an iaa uh, but uh, this particular judgment becomes an relevant judgment from our perspective on a going forward basis i would just want to move to a relevant uh, this is the relevant point wherein the uh, revenue authorities had argued uh, that di what what substantially di trust is doing is that rather than distributing its income it is investing it in brazilian securities and by investing in brazilian securities they are earning income which is not subject to tax and then distributing this particular income to its shareholders thus dealing into the overall non taxability at all the likes of transaction they should have ideally distributed this income but they are not distributing income directly they are swapping it earning uh, interest income from uh, for earning from brazilia and then that particular interest income is distributed rather than the interest income which they earned directly from the mssa uh, this this was something uh, which they have uh, specifically dealt with and while doing so uh, and while taxing this particular transaction uh, ira was of the view that who is the party as well as uh, what is the rationale which one needs to consider while considering taxability so uh, so the uh, view of the uh, view of their uh, revenue authorities was that for the purpose of taxability under the it act party includes any person who shares in or partakes of an arrangement that is who is participating in an arrangement this would clearly include any person that beneficially that benefited financially or economically from the arrangement in question so whosoever is benefiting financially uh, from an arrangement in question should be considered as a uh, should be considered as a party further uh, it is also pertinent to note that Uh, in india we say that a main purpose purpose of that has to be a treaty benefit uh, however for from the south african tax law they said that they say that main purpose or the sole purpose of that has to be a treaty benefit uh, in context of the term purpose uh, the revenue authority said that uh, the purpose test is an objective test of an effect of an arrangement rather than a subjective test of the reason of each participants for their involvement it is an objective test of an effect of an arrangement rather than a subjective test for the participants involved in an arrangement further uh, in contention to this uh, the ssc had argued as follow uh, if you consider that all the parties are a part of the scheme one should say that uh, there has to be a certain degree of thread which is involved between all the parties for the scheme here in this case a limited was always under the assumption that it is only making an investments in psic 3 in terms of preference shares which would be directly or indirectly be done to mssa he was not aware of any specific likes of the transaction for it is plain that a scheme requires a unity to tie several transactions into a deliberate chain a mere series of subsequential event does not constitute a change the sorry does not constitute a chain without a factual basis to allege a limited was anything more than the investor in a preference shares no scheme is established that reaches a if it extends to some or all of the other entities so considering this particular point given that a limited was not directly involved or a limited was not aware of the chain of transactions uh, and a limited is doing nothing uh, in terms of that particular chain or is not actual part of that particular arrangement the court held that uh, court held that a limited is not a party to this particular arrangement because it is not 
participating in that arrangement which the di trust has actually been participating in so this particular transition would relevant be of quite relevance when we are seeing that there's a party there's an investor in the uh, fund structure or in an spv structure but he his involvement is very limited is not aware of the entire exercise being done by the management of the companies uh, or he is not directly participating at the stage which is considered to be an iaa i hope that you will find this particular judgment useful if you require any clarification please feel free to have a comments thank you friends have a great day